Croeso. Muy bon dias, and welcome back to the Finger Mrek Diaries. Last week's video was chock a block full of bad camera angles, dodgy editing, and talking in my mouthful. We think we've learned something from that. So, in a bid to improve things, Julie's taking the peanuts off me. Come with us as we try and show you what goes on as part of our new lives in Spain whilst we try and sort this finca Amdrech out. For those of you that don't understand Welsh, Amdrech means effort. Come on, let's go. I fill a bucket with stones. I start a lorry. Build my own mountain. Neighbours, Olive Grove, Orchard, not sure exactly what the correct terminology is. I don't think he farms it commercially as such. We've only seen him a handful of times in the, that we've been coming to Spain. He's only pruned it twice in ten years that I'm aware of. But anyway, last weekend... He was here pruning again and I asked him if I could have some of the spoil off cuts greenery, call it what you will. So obviously he was uh, more than pleased because I think he's paying somebody as what we used to call in Swansea a hobble, in other words sort of a cast job to, uh, to prune. And the last time he did it, he paid somebody else with a tractor and all he did was bulldoze it all into the corner and that's where it's been rotting ever since. So, we rely heavily on mulch. We put it under the chickens. We put it on the paths in the vegetable plot. We have lots of trees that need mulching. So normally this involves me either pruning or cutting down one of our own trees, of which we still have many, but not an inexhaustible quantity, obviously, and putting them through my chipper. So whilst I got plenty of other things to do, we have a very real and I suppose urgent need for a lot of mulch and wood chip. I need to make some compost and the green leaves on the mulch forms an important part of our composting process and all this spoil was much easier to chip whilst it's green. 
So I've spent, I don't know, about 20 hours this last week, over three days, pushing very reluctant olive branches through my chipper. So that's the result of this week's labour. It looks like a lot, but it won't go far. But it was gruelling work to produce. It wasn't very exciting to do. But it was gruelling work to produce. It wasn't very exciting to do. And I imagine there's even less exciting to watch, so I'll try and uh, add a couple of more bits and pieces into the video but predominantly this last week I've been chipping the smell of orange blossom. Come on.
There's a bad hole of onions. I think these are what they call sweet onions. It looks like some rats or something have been helping themselves. The garlic on the other hand. Quantity is good. Quality. Not so much. The smell here now would be no vampires. Not the bed they were in has never been dug. I literally put a bit of cardboard down, a little bit of compost on top this time last year, and let it go. Covered with a bit of straw. But the difference between this soil and the soil all around is obvious. But I'll rake some of the stones out of it now and get it ready for whatever is going to go in it next. All the worm holes and the soil structure. So I'm trying not to dig. Trying not to dig. Just want to let some air go down in it. But if I hit the stone, can I try and get it out?
you can see where the theory comes from of the no dig, all these little holes which will let water down. And worms, and in this instance, slugs. But now, if I were to dig this fully, all I'd be doing is ruining a year of soil development. bad haul from an 8 meter bed one bucket full of potatoes and stones even quite a big pile of onions and quite a big pile of garlic quality unknown and aided and abetted by an idiot dog and his sister Now in an ideal world, I'd put a couple of barrelfuls of compost on there and cover it with straw. The straw will help keep the moisture in, encourage the worms and stop the weeds coming in as it is spring and things are springing. But I haven't got enough compost, so I'll probably just get uh, higher management to put some straw on it, just to keep it damp. I've got to try and tackle the, the jungle that's trying to encroach. Anyway, it's Saturday. And we got visitors this afternoon, so I uh, got to sort these onions out from the dry and get the barbecue lit.
really will have to do for the day. That's my neighbours back, first time, or about the third time in nine years we've seen somebody in there. We got off to a bit of a dodgy start because I set fire to his olives once, accidentally. And luckily enough, panicking man with a shovel managed to beat it out very quickly. So that was end of bonfires for us. And Bella's just nudged my camera and I don't know what she's done. But anyway, we'd leave this covered, uncovered, until tomorrow. By tomorrow, it will have dried, or the surface will have dried, and you can see the stones a bit easier. The fool that I am, I should just cover it now and pretend they're not there, but hey ho. That's the easy bit done. I've exhausted what's well, you know, within about five meters of the tractor. Now I'm spending more time dragging it in. You doing, Bella? Chicken's got your bone.
here at the Finca, everything that once had a life gets composted. Cardboard, cotton, anything natural basically. Well, you know, not, not stones obviously. Now to make hot, hot compost, you need one part something high in carbon, dried leaves, that type of thing. One part green, which is self-explanatory, and one part something high in nitrogen. So we usually get our greenery from chipping a tree or something. The brown I really struggle with, but uh, I often have to chip up some old branches that have been laying about for years and they're very very brittle and friable something like this and the high nitrogen comes from poo now at the Finca there are two humans three dogs and five chickens and we all poo so obviously the collection of poo comes under housework so it's Julie's job so she gathers all the dog eggs and she cleans up the chickens and we have a composting toilet or a bucket would be a less scientific term for it but anyway so we gather all this and stockpile it and when we have enough quantity to make like a cubic meter then I make hot compost so I can turn that cubic meter over about 19 days I think it is will will be finished high nutrient compost it's a bit coarse because we use wood chip but then you know you've got to work with what you've got this winter for one reason or another we haven't made a lot of compost I haven't had access to a lot of the ingredients barring the pool <sighs> then we had my son stay for a while and to be fair to Julie well not just to Julie then we don't really want a, a bucket in the bathroom so we've got out of the habit this last couple of months and I was in the UK and Julie's in the UK and it is quite labour intensive because you have to turn turn the compost every second day or whenever it gets too hot we don't hot compost during the summer months because it's a fine line between hot compost and a bonfire so we don't do it in the summer months but it's April the weather's warming and I need a lot of compost so full that I am I'm going to try and extend our compost bins and over the next coming weeks I'm gonna try and make a double batch so every two days for the next you know, three weeks or so and committing myself to turning over a cube well two cubic meters of compost to add insult to injury one of my bays is uh, full of detrius skinned over the last couple of months there's at least one dead hen in it probably a couple of rabbit carcasses thanks to the ugly sisters and now I have plenty of greenery so I've got no excuse so I'm gonna have to empty that one bin probably put it through my chipper because the thing works better once it's been through the chipper so it's gonna be a messy couple of days I'll spare you the details of uh, 
all the raw ingredients going in but I'm hoping to add another bay here we just got to find two pallets for that now I have two pallets from the builders and merchants the trouble is they charge me 15 euros deposit on a pallet so that one bay is going to cost me 30 euros but I've seen a couple of abandoned pallets in their lanes so I'll either use my builders merchants pallets from the from the compost bin and then find two in the lanes to take back to the builders merchants or get on the quad of the trailer and uh, go and salvage some pallets from the hedgerows which is probably the most sensible thing to do The ugly sisters have made yet another jailbreak. Thank God for GPS trackers. I'm off to a uh, wrestle them to the ground and drag them home. Well, in the end, I managed to barter six eggs for two pallets from the Parsley Boys. I feel a bit of a fraud having. My carpentry t-shirt on when I'm doing what I'm about to do. This is what my toolkit in Spain has evolved to. Anyway, without further ado. Socks will be full of sawdust again. to say I found my level carpentry when we first bought the sinker I was uh, quite scornful of the standard of the work but I quickly adapted Weekend or stinky onions as we call them, as I call them. Mind you, better that than the smell of the dog eggs.
still have a tape measure and a pencil though. You know without my glasses on it's a whole guess work in any hemp. We need a bit more slats. Once it was a tan and so and now we're set. Both bins are full. Just trying to get a bit of water in them. Been watering for half an hour now. I didn't video me filling them. To be honest, it was pretty unpleasant. And the smell they're giving off is enough to rival anything the pig farmer on the horizon there does. Apparently it's law in the UK now. They've got to close the toilet lid before flushing it. So many people are dying. I had a light-hearted disagreement with my brother about the need to do this the last time I saw him. To be fair, he does work in an industry where hygiene needs to be taken seriously. Though he said that I live in the field, so what would I know? Anyway, I have no doubt be dead by the morning. Because I've just shoveled about 300 litres of stinking humanure. And I've passed about three months worth of dog eggs and kitchen waste through my wood chipper. So the pathogens in the air. Well, it's, it's a wonder the police aren't doing now. I mean, I'm fully expecting to see a van with a hazmat people come in and shut me down that said I, I'm not religious but I was praying that what I was putting dog eggs through my chipper that it wouldn't get blocked oh, there's, there's one <laughs> anyway thanks for joining me on my bimble through the week it's very fashionable I'd say journey but a journey would imply that I've actually got somewhere. But as usual, we've just been reacting. Thanks very much. Dabo.